Welcome to another episode of the Academy Driving Women Entrepreneurship. On the episode we meet today is the Managing Director and CEO of 3 Invest Limited, Miss Ruth Obi. It's great to have you with us on the Academy. Thank you. All right, the first question I'm going to ask is how did you come about the name 3 Invest? Uh, well, first of all, my name is Ruth Obi mm -hmm. and I'm the CEO of 3 Invest. Um, 3 Invest started um, back in 2006 within three friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, we wanted to venture into real estate as young people, and we thought, okay, since it's a real estate investment company, we can call it Three Invest. That's how it started. Okay. Before I, everyone just agreed and decided to do that. It was just like, let me just say, like a joke. But when we all agreed after a year, I decided to keep the name. Came back to Nigeria and registered Three Invest as um, Three Invest Limited as a company, mm -hmm. and kept the name since then. Okay, all right. You're an award-winning. Um CEO, an entrepreneur, and then you're also a woman. How's the journey been so far? It's almost been seven years down the lane. Uh, well, um, thanks for the accolades. I think the first one was the Nigeria Youth Economic Summit in 2012, and quite a number of recognition awards. I think um, it's about being a little more outstanding in what mm -hmm. we're trying to achieve as a brand and the vision of the company. Um, it takes a lot of diligence to be able to put through the challenges that we face, especially as a woman. Of course, it's challenging, but um, I really don't. I'm, not, I'm very, very positive. I, I always take things in the positive light. So when things seem like they're a big challenge to me, I try to see opportunities beyond those challenges. So, so far, it's been quite a tough journey, I must say, but it's been worth it. Mm -hmm. What skills have you learned so far that you can have as for an superior entrepreneur in the sector, what skills have you gathered so far that could help other people? Um, well, if I'm talking to younger generation, you, see, you need a lot of patience. Um, I've never looked at myself as a very patient person, um, but um, by the day I take dozens of patients just to even get up and get stuff done. Um, we are in an environment that you know a lot of things just don't work unfortunately but some don't do work so for you to get things working you have to put a lot of time um so i think the journey so far has been quite interesting like i've said and um as a woman as a young i started you know started at a very, I wouldn't say as a very, because I mean, some people became billionaires at a very, very young age. But as in that, as a young woman, you know, running a company like Three Invest, uh, it takes a lot of courage and to me, prayers, because um, with support from people learning from what, who has done it before, what did they do wrong, what could they do better, and that's that has always been my drive to get it better. Okay. Now, three invest was what happened or happened to be in place during the global economic meltdown. How were you able to pull through that? Oh well, um, we started business. Let me say January two thousand and eight, and that year was actually the boom year. But unfortunately, the boom lasted one year when we got into business. And in two thousand and nine, it was quite difficult. Actually, I took a break and I went back to school. That's what I did. I went back to um, uh, the Enterprise uh, Development Center, EDC, that was just part of Lagos Business School, to go and study for a, quite a few months to learn on how to build for sustainability, building a better brand. So what I now did was to devise a strategy that could keep me in business, even if my enemy was a president. Mm -hmm. So the truth of the matter was that it, I, it was just strategically positioned mm -hmm. in such a way that we can... Either there is boom or no boom, we're in business. So it, it affected us a little time. I mean, there was no business, there was no money, and being a small business was not easy for you to assess funds, but we were able to pull through, and we have a story to tell for that. Thank God to that. All right, now I'm interested in exactly the real estate sector. You see, there are so many things that are happening in the sector nowadays, and then one of it is that it's become so expensive that low in income earners cannot really afford a home. What do you have to say about that? Well, um, home ownership, first of all, real estate is, is the best place to put your money because it's intangible. Um, now, 
having an investment in, in real estate is invaluable, obviously, because you're never going to lose your money, depending on how you bought. Mm -hmm. um, but that, that being said, about ownership of um, oh, oh, no. the housing, affordable, providing house, housing provision for citizens, mm -hmm. which is where I think you're channeling your question, is not really real estate in per se. It's housing, which is a human right. Okay, there's a difference in when you're trying to invest in real estate because you have income and you want to put it somewhere to turn it around mm -hmm. and for having a home, okay? Now, the issue we have here, which we have that forms the facet, is not the investing in real estate, it's the ownership of home, as in having a place to put your head, which is your home. But when you look at it, because we're in a culture whereby there's urban and the, the region area, we all have homes where this is where we are from. But when you come to the when you come to urbanization, now you're talking about investing in real estate, trying to buy a place where you now reside. Now, in in as much as that being done, if the the the, the, the right way is if Niger, as you mean I'm from Lagos State, I have a house. Okay? Now, but if I'm from Imo State, I want to live in Lagos. That's, that becomes a problem. Now, what do we now then do is the government owes us, you know, right as citizens to have our own homes, okay, to provide housing. So if you're in the urban, like, you know, you're in an urban city like Lagos, it becomes, um, with a population of the people, it becomes a little bit difficult for the government to be able to up, up, you know, provide accommodation for everyone or provide housing for everyone. But, I mean, that's how the deficit arose. But where do we individually have where we come from as a home? Of course we do. Okay. Now, talking about housing as well, it's, like I said, is a, is a government, is something that's owned to us by the government. It's a, it's a, gov it's a governmental right to the people. Um, like we know, Lagos State has um, started a scheme called the Lagos homes um home ownership okay. scheme okay that allows you a resident of lagos a taxpaying resident of lagos to be able to okay. assess home finance through that scheme so um but it's it's a bit difficult to explain because sometimes also we actually want want we what we what we don't even deserve um if you are a low income earner and um you want to live in 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 a place where high income earners or rich people leave, for example, let me put it that way, that becomes a problem. So we have to start differentiating, you know, um, urban real estate with regional real estate okay. as well. Yeah. Okay, all right. Now, I'm going to move over to your programs. You have a lot of things going on between invest, mm -hmm. under three invest intelligence. How did you come about that, having your own radio um, um, show well, and also... <laughs> Well, like I said, um, during the downturn, okay, a lot of things crop up. As an entrepreneur, you, you can never have a downtime, okay, in, a, in as much as the economy is down. Then what you do is you have to put a lot of thoughts. You know, I, like I said to people, I love my toilets because it gives me a lot of thinking to do. So as an entrepreneur, you need to think. You need to use your thought process, I mean, because that's the only way you can actually come up with strategy to move your business forward. Um, so what I did after the downtown was to think about strategy, look at things, look at global practices, look mm -hmm. at trends happening worldwide. What do we need to do? And we came up with through Invest Intelligence, which is just like an advocacy tool that would help promote the industry and also give us a strategy to devise resources that can actually bring income to the company. Mm -hmm. That has been running for the past three to four years, I mean, which has like a five-year plan to get to where it wants to be. I mean, coupled with that... We started a radio show. It, it all started like a joke. You have a radio mm -hmm. air right now. And we had the online, 3Invest Online, which is putting information. All these are free resources that 3Invest puts out to the public to be able to educate. So it's about education. It's about information. We know there's depth of data in terms of when you want to assess information in the industry. So mm -hmm. these are things we know that would help our brand get recognition that we need worldwide. So we thought, okay, um, we should have a, um, a gathering mm -hmm. whereby professionals can unite every year 
talk about trends, talk about things happening, look at new opportunities, look at things that can help move the industry forward. That was how the Real Estate Unite started. And of course, the awards was also just encourage and recognize excellence in the industry. A lot of people are quite outstanding. People that have won the, our, our awards in the past two years, you will see that their brands are quite different in what they do. So we believe that as an industry, if you do better, it's better to be recognized for, you know, if you're doing something good, it's good to recognize you to be able to do better. So we felt that we might not even have the capacity as a company, but we have a board, a seven-member advisory board, okay. who are all top professionals, who sit as the judging panel, and also everything that has to do with the corporate governance of the event. So it actually runs like, event actually runs like a company. So all these are things we have as an advocacy tool to help drive you know, focus, you know, to the real estate yes, industry in Nigeria and Africa at large. Okay, all right. Yeah, I'm aware that you have Unite Conference. This is the third one coming up. Yes, October. Yes, October and and second and third, yeah. Okay. You're also going to be launching so Oh, yes. yes. Okay, we're quite excited to talk about that. I mean, in our press conference last week, we talked about that. Um, we'll be launching the healthcare real mm -hmm. estate. No, it's not, we're not launching anything. <laughs> it's actually what it is, is... We have a commercial real estate roundtable okay. that is already programmed at the event. But during the outbreak of the Ebola thing that happened, you know, like last two months, we felt that, you know, having a tool, an advocacy tool that is quite responsive to the growing trends in the industry, we just felt that, oh, really, what are we going to do to lend our own support? You know, so we started researching and we came up to see that also that um, healthcare, investing in healthcare real estate with the kind of demographics we have would push the sector forward. So a lot of foreign investors come into the country, obviously to invest in commercial space, because I mean, that's where you can get in, you know, your money returns mm -hmm. and everything. So um, most of them invest in, in retail spaces, offices spaces and all that. Mm -hmm. We felt, okay, there's, there's need to start pushing investors to invest in healthcare real estate. So that means really, building hospitals, building healthcare cities, yes. building retail mobile clinics to be able to respond to, you know, the health situations that we have here in Nigeria. So we, like, I heard, like, for example, last week, the deputy uh, British commissioner passed away at the airport. The airport should actually have a clinic. I don't think there's any clinic at the airport. But if you go to, uh, for example, walk into UK, you see a place that says it has the medical box. If you have any medical urgency, you can come in there. So I think we should learn from the developed economies, emerging economies, economies that actually have done this and see, I mean, look at Dubai has a Dubai healthcare city. How old is Dubai? Mm -hmm. So when you look at that, how, why can we not push investment in that sector? So we're talking about it from the construction point of view. How do we start building cities that will accommodate our healthcare? You know, just look at like, I mean, all you need is a small parcel of land to be able to put our diagnostic center, um, there are a lot of things in the med. I'm not a doctor, actually. So uh, in the medical space, we just feel that, okay, this interest will help yep. us. And also we are launching, that's the one that we're going to now be launching, the African Women in Real Estate. Um, that was actually much needed because I, I, we were going to do that last year. But uh, we just felt that, okay, at the time that we didn't really have the capacity. So, But we thought that was the right time. So last, earlier in the year, I met with the... World Women in Real Estate, um, um, the, the, the founder in, okay. in MIPIM in Cannes, there's an event called MIPIM in Cannes. We met them, we talked about it, and I told them I was going to launch, she was quite excited. So what does that do? It's just to educate women about okay. their rights, you know, into real estate women entrepreneurs, women developers, so that they can be able to understand the rights and what they can do as people and be able to unify each other in the industry. That will also expose them towards opportunity to assess funds, Okay. And, you know, for them, that will help the women because there are a lot of quite a few women funds out there internationally, globally, lo locally. Goldman Sachs supports women. There is also the Chapel Hill Women Fund. Mm -hmm. And I think that if a few banks are also doing like, you know, um, banking for women. So when we push this together, you can see that it's going to make women more included in what is being done in the industry. Also, of course, it's a male dominated industry. Okay. So we just felt that we want to push interest. Mm -hmm. towards having women and more women participate in real okay. estate.